The Hungarian Grand Prix was billed as being a blockbuster event and it definitely delivered. With a big upgrade, Red Bull were expected to be right in the fight with McLaren for the win, but despite looking strong in qualifying, Verstappen didn't have the race pace. As the race progressed and it became clear he wasn't going to be able to catch the McLarens, his radio messages got angrier and angrier. That anger overflowed as a very late move on Lewis Hamilton led to a big collision, which could easily have ended both of their races. Despite widespread opinion that Verstappen was to blame for the crash, the FIA decided that his late dive bomb wasn't worthy of a penalty. Today, I'll check out all the drama from the Hungarian Grand Prix and review why the stewards decided that Max Verstappen wasn't to blame for the collision, so don't go anywhere. Team radio can often be uncomfortable in Formula 1 as drivers fume over decisions made on the pit wall or are unhappy with their cars. At the Hungaro ring, though, the level of anger and upset was unprecedented. While Verstappen got a lot of attention, he was far from the only one. The scenes at McLaren were embarrassing, as the team's unwillingness to make a call from the pit wall created an uncomfortable situation that took all of the joy out of what should have been an incredible moment for Oscar Piastri. Daniel Ricciardo fumed at his team for giving him a strategy which completely ruined his race before it had really even started. Ricardo had his second pit stop a lap before Yuki Tsunoda had his first, despite both starting on the medium tire. They essentially added 20 seconds to his race time for no gain. Post-race, he said, That's one of the worst strategy calls I've had in 250-something races. A long, old, frustrating race where I just had a lot of anger. The lack of an apology from his team for the terrible call left him furious after the race. There was also anger at the Aston Martin team. Aston Martin ordered Fernando Alonso to let Lance Stroll pass so he could try and pass Yuki Tsunoda. Alonso was told that Stroll would give the place back if he failed to overtake, as is the standard procedure. Lance did not give the place back, ignoring team orders and definitely causing some awkward conversations after the race. However, the conversations happening in Max Verstappen's car were by far the worst. As the reigning world champion became more and more incensed by an unstable car and what he perceived as bad strategy calls, the arguments between him and his race engineer Giampiero Lambiassi exposed the cracks that Red Bull's previously dominant car may have been covering up. The growing tension within car number one's cockpit boiled over as a desperate dive bomb into turn one almost ended Verstappen and Hamilton's race. The battle for the final podium position was reminiscent of the two's fight in 2021, but with Max already on edge, he pushed far too far. A late dive bomb into Turn 1 as Max attempted to pass Lewis caused the Red Bull driver to lock up both front wheels. He couldn't stop his car, and as he overshot his racing line, he made contact with Lewis's front right wheel, sending himself airborne. Luckily, both drivers were able to continue, but it was an incident that could easily have finished both of their races. Verstappen eventually finished in fifth position. The stewards announced they would be reviewing the incident after the race and calling both drivers to the stewards' office to discuss the incident. After deliberation, the stewards decided to take no further action for the collision. The verdict form declared that the driver of car 44 stated that it was a racing incident, while the driver of car 1 argued that this was a case of changing direction under braking. After looking at the footage and telemetry provided by both teams, the stewards decided that Hamilton had not moved under braking and in fact drove exactly as he had the lap before. They also said that Verstappen braked where he had done the lap previously, but was traveling faster at the time of braking due to DRS. The increased speed meant that Verstappen was unable to control his car in the braking zone, with the stewards saying, it was clear that car 1 locked up both front wheels on the approach to turn 1 prior to any impact occurring, but missing the normal cornering line for a typical overtaking maneuver. So the stewards confirmed that Hamilton drove as he normally did, while Verstappen did not adjust his braking point for his increased speed. However, they did state that Hamilton should have done more to avoid the incident. The stewards do not consider this to be a typical case of changing direction under braking, although it is our determination that the driver of car 44 could have done more to avoid the collision. Accordingly, we determined that no driver was predominantly to blame and decided to take no further action. This is a decision that has baffled fans and the media. The FIA have previously stated that they want to penalize actions, not the outcomes. 
An almost identical incident occurred at the Miami Grand Prix between Carlos Sainz and Oscar Piastri. Sainz made a late move down the inside of Piastri, was going too fast to hold his line and lost control of his car. Piastri then had to pit for a new front wing, losing places and eventually finishing outside of the points. In that case, Sainz received a five-second penalty as well as one penalty point. The stewards' report of that incident read, It was clear to us that car 55 was to blame for the collision. In the overtake attempt, car 55 braked late, missed the apex and, in the process, lost the rear, with the resulting collision. Although car 81 was trying to turn in to counter the overtaking attempt, car 81 gave sufficient room to car 55. In the circumstances, we find car 55 to be predominantly to blame for the collision. The collision between Verstappen and Hamilton could easily have damaged the Mercedes car, forcing Hamilton into a pit stop or even worse, ending his race. In that situation, it's likely the stewards would have penalized Verstappen, but this inconsistency causes a problem. By making the decision that this was a racing incident and stating that Hamilton could have done more to avoid the collision, the FIA have told drivers that late and dangerous dive bombs are fine as long as you don't damage the car you're trying to overtake. And if the car you are trying to overtake doesn't take avoiding action, then that's their fault. Hamilton left Verstappen room on the inside of the corner if he could have got his Red Bull slowed down. That is all that is required of him as a defending car, according to the sporting regulations. The attacking driver has to be in control of their car, and the defending driver puts trust in the attacking driver to do so. Assuming both drivers follow the rules that space is left and control is kept, then contact will be avoided. Given how little time and space there is to respond to a move like the one Verstappen made, the stewards are implying that the driver being passed is partially responsible for the mistake by the passer, which is a dangerous precedent to set and opens the door to dangerous moves going unpunished in the future. After the race, the move by Verstappen was quickly dissected, and Hamilton's old rival Nico Rosberg was quick to point out that Verstappen was in the wrong by trying to blame Lewis. I think Verstappen needs to watch it on a TV somewhere. Someone needs to tell him there was actually a corner there, that's why Lewis was turning in. Hamilton was keen to distance himself after the incident. In the post-race interviews, he said, It felt like a racing incident, and it's easy to make mistakes like that, so I don't feel there should be any hostility, but of course, from his side there always will be. With Mercedes now fast enough to battle with the Red Bulls on track, this is unlikely to be the last time we see Hamilton and Verstappen clashing. Hamilton may have been happy to put the collision down as a racing incident and move on after the race, but Verstappen was furious during his media obligations. It was clear from the start that it was going to be a bad day to be Max's race engineer. After being told to give back the position he gained on Lando Norris at Turn 1, he fumed at GM Piero Lambiassi, or GP, saying he had been forced off. From then on, the reigning world champion continually vented his frustration at Red Bull strategy. After the collision with Hamilton, Verstappen quickly told GP that Hamilton had moved under braking, but at that point, GP was clearly fed up with being sworn at throughout the race. He said to Verstappen, I'm not going to get into a radio fight with the other teams, Max. We'll let the stewards do their thing. It's childish on the radio. Childish. After the race, Verstappen was pressed for a reaction to his critics, saying he went too far in the race and disrespected his Red Bull squad over team radio. He replied, they can all F off. I get a lot of shh thrown at me in Austria, with people saying moving under braking, blah blah blah. I'm positioning my car on the initial movement and then I keep it straight. Today under braking, he just kept turning to the right and that is why I also locked up, because I was going for the move, but I saw the car on the outside kept coming at me. Otherwise, we would have already crashed before. Red Bull boss Christian Horner was quick to make nothing of the radio calls and avoided commenting on the collision with Hamilton. He simply said that the team and Max would have discussions behind closed doors once everyone had calmed down. With a race in Belgium this weekend, there won't be much time for Red Bull to settle any internal tension after this race. What did you think of the collision between Verstappen and Hamilton? Was the FIA right to say that it wasn't Verstappen's fault? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.